of childhood as a special time of innocence in need of protection, nurturing, and education is a recent phenomenon in the West. Prior to the late 19th century, children were seen as miniature adults. Now we have laws protecting them from sexual and economic exploitation as well as safeguarding their health. But once again, societal trends are threatening the sanctity of childhood. As a mother, I can't help but notice that the girls around me seem to be getting older faster. As a pediatric endocrinologist, I've been observing that girls are going through puberty earlier. As a researcher investigating the timing of puberty, I can tell you exactly what the data show. When experts talk about the start of puberty, we are not discussing first periods. The first sign of puberty in girls is actually breast development. We have found that, on average, African-American girls are showing signs of breastbedding at age eight and three quarters. For Hispanic girls, it's nine and a quarter. And for Caucasian and Asian girls, it's nine and three quarters. But these are averages. So overall, at age seven, 15% of girls have signs of puberty, such as breastbedding. That's second grade. Despite the fact that I know this data inside and out, as well as the fact that I care for early blooming girls clinically, I still find it shocking when I go clothes shopping for my kids and see bras being sold for the eight-year-old girls. Does it matter that girls are physically maturing long before the calendar and their brains say they should be? The evidence suggests that there are serious physical and psychological consequences. As a teen, a girl who goes through puberty early is at a higher risk of being depressed, developing an eating disorder, abusing drugs, and engaging in sexual behavior earlier. As an adult, she's at a higher risk of breast cancer, and heart disease. So yes, there are scary consequences, and it's no surprise that people want to try and figure out what is triggering the earlier onset of puberty in girls. Both on the playground and in scientific presentations, I'm often asked a whole host of questions about the cause. Is it the antibiotics in the meat? Is it the growth hormone in the milk? Is it the pesticides in the produce? Scientists have also speculated about whether it's the flame retardants in our couches or the chemicals in the cosmetics, toiletries, and sunscreen we use, not to mention what's in the water supply. As harrowing as all these causes may sound, few people in the general public are receiving the right information or targeting the real culprit, obesity. What is overwhelmingly clear from the scientific data, but not well known in the lay public, is that girls who are susceptible to puberty are more likely to be overweight. Body fat is not an inert substance that just sits there and jiggles when we don't want it to. Body fat makes estrogens, the same kinds of hormones that are normally released from the ovaries during puberty. So, when there's more body fat, there's higher levels of estrogen, leading to breast budding, not just pudgy fat tissue on the chest that looks like breasts but isn't. But obesity is obviously a complex topic. Unfortunately, and unsurprisingly, the same racial groups in our country that are susceptible to obesity are the exact same racial groups that have the highest rates of puberty, these are not caused simply by genetic differences. Unfortunately, in the developed world, race is often a proxy for what researchers call socioeconomic factors, what the rest of us call being poor or not. Children of poverty don't have access to stores where they can buy fresh fruits and vegetables, let alone pesticide-free ones. Children of poverty don't have access to playgrounds and parks where they can run around and play freely. Yes, we know there are other triggers. Toxic stress in a girl's family life can jumpstart puberty at earlier ages. Early sexual abuse is a risk factor. So is living with toxic levels of family arguments and conflicts and neighborhood violence. And most notably, 
a girl who grows up without her biological father is twice as likely to get her period before age 12 as a girl who lives with her biological father, even when controlling for other factors. The data here are pretty clear. The question is why. It's probably related to the way stress changes the neuroendocrine system or the links from the brain to the hormonal regulation of puberty. If obesity and stress are the leading triggers in early puberty, how do we weigh the role of those environmental chemicals? Endocrine disrupting chemicals, or EDCs, commonly found in plastics and pesticides, they're the main concern because they can mimic hormones in the body. Some EDCs mimic hormones that are important regulators of puberty, particularly estrogen. Some EDCs can even cause obesity. Unfortunately, we live in a toxic soup of chemicals, and we may never be able to isolate a single one as the cause. Plus, it's nearly impossible to eliminate them all from our bodies and our environment. We don't have a single smoking gun, and one might never be found. Plus, making it more complicated, the same groups that are at the highest risk of obesity are also at the highest risk of the psychological risks as well as the chemical exposures much more research is needed. We can try and protest all those chemicals, and believe me, I am concerned about EDCs. But what would be a much more effective public health intervention would be to try and tame the obesity epidemic and put some greater social infrastructure in place to buffer children from the stresses of poverty. As an endocrinologist, I can speak best about the prevention of obesity. There are a number of changes that we can make to start to turn things around. We can work to improve the nation's school lunch program. We can change food labeling laws. We need to keep PE, physical education, as an important part of the curriculum. And we've got to get vending machines out of schools. Sweet drinks and chips have no business being easy, available options for young children. And on an individual basis, we can each opt for alternatives to the sweet drinks, candy, and cookies that seem to serve as universal rewards for school achievement or celebration after athletic events. In my San Francisco neighborhood, we have the luxury of obsessing about things like which meat to buy, the need for organic fruit, and what's in our sunscreen. Maybe we're neurotic and privileged, but our fears are justified. There are good reasons to try and tame the acceleration of childhood. Puberty is a long, complex biological process that is not triggered by any one particular factor. What we know now is that obesity and stress are major triggers, and happily, we already have some tools in place to ensure a healthier society for all. My children, your children, and those of future generations don't deserve any less. Thank you. <laughs>